Sing it like you mean it, Grace. It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Here we are with chapter one, lesson number three, partial fractions three, irreducible, quadratic. Now, partial fractions, a very quick recap. If we have these two fractions here and we're asked to add them together, we can easily do that. However, there will be times that we need to reverse the process, as we will see later on for integration and differentiation. So splitting this fraction into two or more simpler fractions is known as expressing it in its partial fractions. There are four types. And in the last two lessons, we looked at distinct linear factors and repeated linear factors. So we're now moving on to look at the irreducible quadratic factor. So what is that all about? Well, if we're asked to split, for example, x plus 3 over x take away 6, bracket x squared plus 5, into partial fractions, we can see that the denominator contains a quadratic. However, it is not just any quadratic. It is a quadratic that cannot be factorized. Oh no! So what do you do in that case? Well, first of all, you check that it cannot be factorized. And if it can, factorize it. But here it can't, and it is known as an irreducible quadratic. If this is the case, first of all, we would prove it is irreducible, and we prove it using the discriminant. You got it. Use a discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. If you cannot factorize it, if it is reducible, then b squared minus 4ac will be less than zero. So you've got to prove that first of all. If this is the case, the partial fractions then will be of the form we will have, because we've got this x take away 6, which is a linear factor, we're just going to have a over x take away 6. But this bit here with the irreducible quadratic, the x squared plus 5, we will have that as bx plus c over x squared plus 5. A further example, if we were asked to express this in partial fractions, the 2x take away 4 over x plus 8, bracket x take away 3, bracket x squared plus 3x take away 7. Well, first of all, we would check that this is irreducible, which it is. Check the quadratic parts irreducible. And then we would write that as, well, we've got the x plus 8, which is a linear factor. So that's a over x plus 8. B is going to be over the x take away 3. Again, that's a linear factor. But because this part is an irreducible quadratic, we will write that as something x plus something. And here, we've used A, we've used B. Move on to the next letters of the alphabet. So we'd have that as Cx plus D over x squared plus 3x take away 7. Let's try some examples then. Example 1. Express... 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 over x plus 1 bracket x squared plus 2x plus 2 in partial fractions. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look and at the bottom we've got an x plus 1. We've got our linear factor. Woo! High five linear factor. We've got an x squared plus 2x plus 2. That is a quadratic. Can it be factorised? Well, let's check. You either factorise it in your head, try to do that. If you can't do that, use a discriminant to prove that it is irreducible if that is what you believe. So, take the coefficient of x squared, x and the number on its own. They are the values of a, b and c. So we've got 1x squared, a is 1. 2x, b is 2. And 2, so c is 2. Put sub that into b squared minus 4ac. It gives us 2 squared. Take away 4 times 1 times 2, which is negative 4. So what? Well, that is less than 0. So what? Well, that means it's irreducible because b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Therefore, it's irreducible. So when we split this into its partial fractions, this, the x plus 1, is just going to be a over x plus 1. But with our irreducible quadratic, we're going to have that as bx plus c over x squared plus 2x plus 2. From there, we're just back to following the same steps that we have been doing. We need to add these fractions together, so we need the same denominator. a is over the x plus 1, but we also need the denominator to have an x squared plus 2x plus 2. So multiply the numerator and denominator by x squared plus 2x plus 2. So we'd have a times x squared plus 2x plus 2 over, and then we've got the x plus 1, x squared plus 2x plus 2 which is what we want. bx plus c will be x plus c is over x squared plus 2x plus 2, but we also need in the bottom an x plus 1. So multiply the numerator and denominator by an x plus 1. Just make sure that you put brackets around bx plus c. If you don't, then you're only multiplying the c by x plus 1. But we're multiplying the whole of the top 
bx plus c by the x plus 1. Just put brackets around that. From there, you can see the denominators are the same. Therefore, we can add the numerators. So we end up with, on the top, a times x squared plus 2x plus 2 plus the bx plus c times that x plus 1. From there, well, we have the denominator on the left, the denominator on the right, they are equal. Therefore, we can cancel the denominators. The numerators, therefore, will be equal. So 3x squared out 2x plus 1 equals this right-hand side. Now we've got the right-hand side, we need to deal with that and choose some values of x that will allow us to find the values of a, b, and c. So, first of all, anybody wants to have, they would have. Go on, Sandy. Good. So, we've got this x plus 1. If x was negative 1, well, that would become 0. Meaning then you'd be multiplying the b and the c by 0, which would eliminate b and c, allowing you to find a. So, let x equal negative 1. As I said, that eliminates b and c. If you do that then, well, we'd have 3 times negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which works out to be 2. And that would work out to be 1 times a, if we sub in negative 1 and in place of x. And then because you've got negative 1 add 1, well that's 0. You multiply all that by 0, so that disappears. So we know the value of a is going to be 2. We need to find another value of x that we could use. Sandy, good. Full of good ideas today. Let x equal 0. If x was equal to 0, well that would eliminate b. So if x was 0, that's going to eliminate b, so we'll replace x in this here with 0. So we'd have 3 times 0 squared, add 2 times 0, plus 1, blah, blah, blah. That gives you 1. Uh, we'd have 2 times a, because x is just going to become 0, which gives us 2a. Uh, b is going to be 0 times b, which is just 0, so b is going to be eliminated. And 0 plus 1 is 1, so we're left with 1 times c, which is just c. We know the value of a is 2, so we can sub that in. Therefore, c works out to be negative 3. And after that, well, there's no other values really that we can sub in in place of x that would eliminate anything. So just pick a nice simple value of x and then sub in the values of a and c and that will allow us to find b. What number? Go on, Sandy, finish it off. Yeah, I'd go for 1 as well. Just pick a nice easy number. Go with 1. So 3 times 1 squared, add 2 times 1 plus 1 and so on gives us 6. If you replace x with 1, it works out to be 5a. Replace x with 1, then we'd have b plus c times 2, which means we'd have 2 times b and 2 times c, which is 2b plus 2c. After that, replace the values of a and c. We know a is 2, and we know c is negative 3. So 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And then from there, you can rearrange that, so you get 2b equals. 2b works out to be 2. After you know 2b is 2, divide both sides by 2, so b equals 1. We were asked in the question to express this in partial fractions. When we did that, we had a over the x plus 1 plus the bx plus c over x squared plus 2x plus 2. Therefore, we know then the values of a, b, and c. So we can say then that that will be, replace a with 2, so it'll be 2 over x plus 1 plus bx plus c will be as 1, so it'll be 1 times x plus negative 3, which you would just write as x take away 3 over this x squared plus 2x plus 2. And that is your answer for that one. Yeah. Example 2, express x squared take away 10x take away 8 over x cubed take away 8 in partial fractions. First thing that you'd have to do here, Chuka, what do you think? Brilliant, good. We need to have the bottom factorised. It's not factorised here, so we need to factorise it. How do we factorise, though? What would you do, Chuka? Brilliant, well done. You're needing to factorise the x cubed take away 8, so either you can use substitution or synthetic division in order to find a factor. The easiest way to probably do it is to sub in a value of x, take away 8, and check what will give you 0. Obviously here, should be quite easy, but if you sub in 2, 2 cubed is going to be 8, 8 take away 8 is 0, so you know 2 is going to work. So, really, what we need to move on to next is our synthetic division. We know 2 is going to work, so we can set it up. So we have our polynomial, we are dividing it, so we've got this L shape, our synthetic division. Remember to think of x cubed to take away 8 as 1x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x take away 8. So take the coefficients, we'd have 1, 0, 0, and negative 8. 2 works, 2 cubed take away 8 is 0, so we're putting 2 on the outside, and work your way along. 
So, from polynomials in higher, bring the 1 down. 2 times 1 gives you 2. 0 add 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 0 add 4 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 8 add 8 is 0. And because you get 0, well, it means then it confirms that x take away 2 is going to be a factor. Therefore, we can write the x cubed take away 8 as x take away 2 times something. And where do you get the something from? Well, you take it from down here. Because we had the coefficient of x cubed, this here will be the coefficient of x squared. So we'd have 1x squared plus 2x plus 4. So x cubed take away 8 can be written as this. Therefore, we can write this x squared take away 10x take away 8 over x cubed take away 8 as, well, keep the numerator the same, but the denominator we can write just in its factorised form, which is this. Now, we can apply partial fractions. So to apply partial fractions, well, I suppose before we do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to think, right, well, we've got the x squared plus 2x plus 4. Can that be factorised? If you're trying to factorise it in your head, well, no, it doesn't work. So you're thinking it's irreducible. To prove it's irreducible, just use the discriminant. So the discriminant, in this case, a coefficient of x squared is going to be 1, coefficient of x is 2, and the number on its own is 4. So we'll get a, b, and c. Sub them into b squared minus 4ac, we get 2 squared, take away 4 times 1 times 4, which gives us negative 12. So what? Well, negative 12 is less than 0, which means then that this quadratic is irreducible. We cannot factorise it, we can't split it up anymore. And because of that, when we write this in as partial fractions, we can say that that is going to be a over x take away 2, because that's just our linear factor, plus... And then here's your irreducible quadratic, so you know that it's going to be of the form bx plus c over x squared plus 2x plus 4. After that, to add the fractions together, we need the same denominator. So the denominator we want is x take away 2 times this x squared plus 2x plus 4. a is over the x take away 2, but what are we missing? Well, we're missing this x squared add 2x add 4, so multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by x squared add 2x add 4 bx plus c is over x squared to add 2x add 4, but we're missing this x take away 2. So multiply the numerator and denominator of this by x take away 2. And that is what you would get. From there, you can see that the denominators are equal. Although this one's back to front, they are still equal. And because the denominators are equal, well, you can add the numerators. So we'd end up with a times x squared add 2x add 4 plus bx plus c times x take away 2 over this x take away 2 bracket x squared add 2x add 4. From there you can cancel the denominators because you've got the same denominator on the left and the right. If you do that then the numerators will be equal. So x squared take away 10x take away 8 equals a bracket x squared add 2x add 4 plus bx plus c times that x take away 2. Now we're dealing with this line. So with this line here, we need to find the values of a, b, and c. What's the best way to do that? Well, we want to try and eliminate either a or b or c, or maybe a couple of them. If you look here, because we're multiplying bx plus c by x take away 2, well, if x take away 2 was equal to 0, that would eliminate bx plus c, because we'd be multiplying it by 0. So let's take this bracket, set it equal to 0. That way, x would be equal to 2. So if you let x, x equal 2, that eliminates b and c. Therefore, we'd have 2 squared take away 10 times 2 take away 8, which gives us negative 24. In here, if you replace x with 2, we'd end up with 12a. And as I said, you'd have 0 times bx plus c, which just becomes 0. So we're left with 12a equals negative 24. Then a would be equal to negative 2. After that, what do we do? Well, we could eliminate b by setting x equal to 0. If x was equal to 0, well, that's going to eliminate b. So if you do that, replace x with 0, over here we'd be left with negative 8. That would give us 4 times a, and then 0 times b would cancel out. 0 take away 2 is negative 2, so we're left with negative 2c. However, we know the value of a, we know a is negative 2, so we can replace a with negative 2. And if we do that, we'd end up with negative 8 equals negative 8, take away 2c. So negative 8 take away what gives us negative 8? Well, it's just negative 8 take away 0, so we know 2c must equal 0. And if 2c is 0, then c is also going to be 0. 
After that, well, there's nothing else really that we can sub in to eliminate anything, so just pick a random value of x. Remember, pick easy numbers. What I'd probably go for is just x being 1. If x was equal to 1, we'd have 1 squared, take away 10 times 1, take away 8, which would give us negative 17. Again, if x was 1, that would give us 7a. If x was equal to 1 in here and you multiplied it out, we'd end up with 7a, take away b, take away c. We're doing that because we know the values of a and c, which means the only unknown is going to be b. So if we replace a with negative 2, it would give us negative 14. If we replace c with 0, well, that would really just disappear meaning then that we can find the value of b. A negative 14 take away 3 would give you negative 17, so b is going to be in, uh, 3. From there we have the values of a, b and c. Therefore, if we rewrite that in its partial fractions, that was when we factorised the bottom, we had a over x take away 2, well a is negative 2, so we'd have negative 2 over the x take away 2. bx plus c, well b is 3, so it's going to be 3x plus 0, over the x squared plus 2x plus 4. Remember though, right at the start, it didn't give us it in this factorised form. It gave us x squared take away 10x take away 8 over x cubed take away 8. So we can say then that that is going to be equal to, and then as I just said, replace a with negative 2. So negative 2 over x take away 2 plus 3x plus 0. So just 3x over x squared plus 2x plus 4. Give these questions a shot in the workbook, page 5. If you still need the workbook, just email me and I will send you one. It has all the questions you need for Unit 1 and all the answers as well. Good luck with this. Any problems, let me know.